Hey, what is up guys? Today we're going to do another kind of um, character or model selection just like we did in a previous video but this time we're going to use button on the left to choose which model we want. We're not going to be using inputs and also we're going to add a little rotation script to our model so we can look at it before we select. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I will show you the initial setup I currently have, so you can uh, have something on your own, uh, something of your own, like me before we get started. So basically, as you can see here, I have a few objects, uh, five of them, the five first are models. Basically, they are a model I'm going to be swapping through, so if I disable them all, you can see that they're pretty much gone. And also I have the platform, which is... Um, which is basically all my my, my, my little setup, my little uh, level setup here. So I can disable that as well, and you can see plus the main camera and the directional light. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I will go ahead and create myself a empty game object that I'll call the models container. And basically what is, uh, this is going to do is I'm simply going to take my five models, so the one I'm going to be swapping through, and I'll be putting them as children's. Just like this. Okay, now we'll proceed to creating some scripts. So on top of the model container, I will go ahead and declare myself a new C# -sharp script that I'll call um, character creation script. You can call it whatever you want, but for my my personal scene, I will call this character creation. Okay, so in this script, we'll be using some lists. So make sure you include the system collection generic. And we'll go ahead and declare ourselves a private list of game object that we'll call models. Also, make sure you declare it right away. Oh, well, you don't have to actually. We'll do that in the start. Um, yeah, talking about start, we'll go ahead and declare that as well. So, private void start. And in here, we'll do models is equal to a new list of game object. Just like this. And then we need to fill that list with the models we currently have. So. Um, since the character creation script is is like on top of all the other scripts, so inside the model container you have all the models we want to be using. So we just have to access the children and put them inside of the list. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a for each transform t in transform, which is the uh, parent transform. We'll do models dot add t dot game object. So for every transform inside the parent transform, so uh, Grace transform, Star Puppy transform, Warrior Hat, and then Puppy, for each of these we're gonna add the game object uh, link to it. So basically we're just taking this game object, putting it in the list. All right. So at the same time we put these in the list, we're actually gonna go set them to uh, inactive. So let's do t dot game object dot set active to false. Now let's go ahead in game and see what it does. We hit play, and for each object in here, um, we're going to set the set active to false. Also note that now they are contained inside of a list called models in our model container object, or I mean character creation component. Now let's go ahead and declare ourselves a private int that we'll call um, selection index, and we're going to set this to either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or not five actually, one, two, three, or four. And this is going to be the default uh, index. So let's go ahead and say default index of the model. Oh, model. And what we'll do is uh, right below this for each function, we'll do models at the index selection index dot set active is now equal to true. Now, if um, if we look at this, this is going to turn the first index in our list to active. So when we hit play, we should have one model going on there. So the first one is gray. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and declare ourselves a private function. So a private void select. Actually, you know what? This, is, this has to be public, my bad. So a public void select, and we are going to take in parameter a int. I will call index for now. And pretty much what this function will do is it will allow us to select any models at any time, basically. So we just call this function, and it's going to swap 
which model we're currently on. So let's first check if we are, um, let's just do some, some conditions first. So first thing we'll do is if index, the one we receive, is the same as the selection index, then we don't want to be doing anything because it's already the one we, we have, so it's already the chosen one. So we'll do return if it is the same. Now let's do if index is smaller than the one. Um, well, yeah, it's smaller than zero actually. So if index is something negative, then we'll also do return because this is not this is not valid. And in the same line, we're actually going to do so if index is below zero, we do nothing. Or if index is bigger or equal to models dot count. So we know there is five model in our list and we know that the array is zero base. So we can go zero, one, two, three, four. And models dot count is pretty much equal to five because we've got five model. This isn't zero base. So if we make it to five, then we get a uh, null reference because the index five doesn't exist. So let's read that again. So if index is the same as the one we currently have, we do nothing. Or if index is below zero or above the normal or well above the, the, the array range, we also do nothing. So in case it is a good number, then what we want to do is simply, let's do models at the selection index, so the one we currently have, set active to false. And then we'll do selection index is now equal to index. And we'll do that again. So models at the selection index dot set active is now equal to true, just like this. Okay, so now that we have a function that does uh, select whichever model we want instantly, then we need a place to call it. So say we're gonna make just a, just a test, we're gonna make a private void update. And in that update, we'll do say, um, if input dot get key down, just to try it out. So get key down and we'll do key code A so if we press A, let's go ahead and select um, the index number four, actually number four, yeah. Just like this, press play, I'm gonna hit A on the keyboard and it just moved to the last index, which is the puppy. Okay, now we know this works, we're actually going to put it inside of uh, buttons. So we're going to go ahead and create ourselves some kind of UI so we can have a UI on the left over here and it's going to allow us to select whichever model we currently want. So to do this, I'm going to right click in my hierarchy, create a new panel, and I'll put my scene into these so I can see it properly. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll actually anchor this on the left. So by holding shift, I'm going to click on this little square here and then I'm going to click without holding shift. Then I modify the width for say 250 by 500, something of the sort. And inside that panel, I will, I will go ahead and uh, create myself some buttons. So this is button one. And we have five models, so I'm going to create five of them. So button one, two, three, four, five. Just like this. Now on my panel, I will add a vertical layout group. So it's going to rearrange all my buttons so they're all they're all the same width and they're pretty much all the same size. Okay, let's hit play just to see how it looks in game. So it looks like that, and this is pretty much yeah, this is pretty much what I want. So I'll go ahead and just do a little bit of modification. Maybe I'll add a little offset of say 20 or 30. And then I'll go ahead and change this for um I'll customize it a little bit. So this one is going to be gray. This one is going to be the star puppy and the warrior. I'm just using the same name as uh, my models. And of course you can customize your button as much as you want. You could be putting thumbnails if you want in there as well. And here we go. So we have pretty much five different buttons now and what I'll be doing is I will go ahead and add this select function that we have over here. I'll go ahead and add this to the unclick event for each button. So button number one here is uh, gray. 
I'll go ahead and do the unclick function over here. I'll, I'll hit the plus sign. And then I have to choose which object contains the, um, the select function. In our case, the model container is the one that has the character creation script on it. So I'm going to have to drag and drop this model container right here in this little box over here. And then it's going to list me all the components of that object. Since it is a empty game object, it only contains the game object itself, the transform, because every game object needs a transform, and we also have a character creation script on top of it. So inside the character creation script, you should be able to find all the public function that your script can use. In our case, we have a public select over here, and it takes in parameter a int. Now right next to it, you can find um, a number, and this is which int we give it. So this is the int parameter of our function. In our first button, we want to give it the index 0, so this is going to work. Let's go ahead and do the same thing now on button number 2. So start puppy, drag and drop the model container, choose the select function, and this one is going to have to um, have 1 as a parameter. So change the parameter here from 0 to 1. We do the same thing over here. So model container, oh. model container, we choose character creation and then select, and this is going to be index number 2. And we keep doing that until all our buttons are filled. So model container, select 3, and finally, one more time, select 4. Alright, so let's go ahead and try this out in game now. We hit play. And if I click on this one, it's it's not going to do anything. Now if I click on this one, it's going to select the index number 1. Now let's go with the hat one. So this is the hat model, the warrior, the puppy, the gray puppy, and the star puppy. Okay, so we got this down now. Um, let's customize it just a little bit more. What I'd like to be able to do is I like to be able to take the model container, well, pretty much any model, and I'll be able to rotate it around so I can look at the model before I choose. So to do that, I will simply create myself a... Actually, I don't even have to create myself a new script. I'm going to go right here in our character creation script. In the update, what I'll do is... So it's going to be fairly simple. What we'll do is transform.rotate and it takes in a vector 3 parameter so um, we want to be rotating on the y axis and you'll see why in a moment but let's go ahead and create ourselves a new vector 3 and we want to put 0 for the x component now as for the y component you want to be putting something uh, that you're going to be controlling the rotation with so I'll go ahead and do the mouse so input dot get axis and we'll use the mouse x axis which is by default just um, your cursor, your mouse on the x axis and then if you want you can put some zero in the z parameter as well, you don't have to though so just like this, transform that rotate and we give it this kind of parameter now let's go ahead and look at what it gives us in game and when I move my mouse around you can see that the model rotates uh, with pretty much the direction I am going with. Now say I would like to restrain it a little bit so um, when I am not holding the mouse button I don't want this to happen so right now whether or not I hold any mouse buttons it's going to rotate if I move my mouse on the x-axis and I will go ahead and add myself a constraint so in the update right above my transform that rotate I'll do if input dot get mouse button so if I am currently holding, say, the left click, which is mouse button index 0, if I am holding the left click, then we're allowed to move, else it's not going to do it. So here I am moving my mouse around, nothing happens. Let's say I hold the left click, and now it works. So I can go ahead and rotate this around as much as I want. Okay guys, so that pretty much concludes this video. If you have any comment or question, please leave them in the comment section below. If this was helpful to you, please leave it a like and also subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.